Back in 1987, Art Black wrote that Jandek lives where music is an expression of emotion and not a packaged entertainment made for self rather than for an audience. More bluntly, he often sounds like he's just singing to the wall, according to Dr. Demento. That best describes the solo acoustic songs, but the majority of Jandek's work strikes me as the kind of art whose value is mostly in its creation. After all, why release over a hundred records without much promotion? Even if you disregard the 21st century releases, that still leaves an extensive, emotionally diverse library that many artists can only dream of matching. Even if Jandek had not received extra publicity from the book Songs in the Key of Z, the man's thoughts and feelings still would have ended up somewhere. Since he long ago burned the seven books he wrote, the long-term preservation of his albums meant that music was the proper outlet. When I think of Jandek albums as therapy, Telegraph Melts is usually what comes to mind. In the month leading up to this review, I looked forward to calling it one of the most psychotic things I've ever heard. Maybe I just enjoy assigning roles to each record, but that doesn't mean I know each role right off the bat. In reality, what I originally considered pure insanity is now more reminiscent of primal scream therapy. If the world has treated you unfairly, and you have no outlet for your rage in your studio apartment, an imaginary dialogue with telegraph melts might be just what you need. But while its usefulness is clear, its quality is not. If you're somewhat familiar with it, you already know the first highlight, and if you've heard the You Walk Alone album, you can probably pick out the other one. For years, I always skipped to these tracks, because the rest was simply too harsh or too baffling. Thankfully, ever since I started the reviews, I've been thinking more critically and stepping outside my comfort zone, which means I've started to enjoy a couple of the lesser songs. As for the others, I'm trying to appreciate them for the oddities that they are, and not surprisingly, my results are mixed. Before I give a rundown of the track list, I have a few words about the singers. First of all, Nancy has returned, and her fans should note that she plays her biggest role on this record. But more importantly, it appears that a second male singer previously joined the Foreign Keys session, and he came back with a vengeance on today's record. I don't think we have a name for this guy, and I'm pretty sure it's not Eddie from the Blue Corpse album. The reason I didn't bring this up before is that I thought this was Jandek singing with the tape slowed down. Yet, I don't know how I came to believe that. Maybe Seth Tissue or someone else said it in the mailing list. In any case, I recently saw a reviewer claim there was a second guy, so I asked one of my friends in the fan base, and he made a pretty good case in favor of that. If somebody watching this thinks I was correct from the beginning, please say something, because Jandek fans are in desperate need of something to argue about. Anyway, once you get started, you might notice a hint of interstellar discussion, because the first few tracks play a similar role to those on that album. Nancy has the mic, although her lyrics aren't too complex, since the focus is primarily on the groove. I used to skip over these songs, but now that I look at them as a bundle, it adds some character to the album that probably helps it in the long run. However, Ace of Diamonds is where it gets exciting. There's a bit of history behind this one, because it was actually more palatable on the original LP. I may have praised Six and Six for having reverb on the CD version, but that approach was taken a bit too far this time. The result is a muddy mess that sounds like Jandek performing in a cathedral, which doesn't really work with electric guitar. Aside from that, this decently long track showcases a lower guitar tuning, one of Jandek's more passionate vocal deliveries, and a fun drum solo at the end. The narrator is this aggressive gambler who takes pleasure in seeing people go broke, which reminds me of They Knew My Game from the Your Turn to Fall album. If this is the same guy, it's probably an earlier stage in his gambling addiction. Overall, it's a solid track for this period, but you might have a hard time finding the LP version. However, I do have access to it if any of you want me to post it. I just realized this, but the next highlight is actually a pair of songs, one of which easily overshadows the other. They feature similar lyrics and rhythms, while Nancy once again takes center stage. No Slow Ones may be the more obscure track, but it grew on me once I started the review. It's always nice when the bass is prominent in a Jandak song, 
especially if the fretboard is used. As for the lyrics, they're a continuation of the breakup theme from the previous album. The narrator needs a rest, although she appreciates what her man has done for her, and she's not completely giving up on him. It may not be super catchy, but the shuffling rhythm makes it a fine walking song, especially if you're in a dull landscape. However, part of the reason it's obscure is that the next track is one of Jandek's most famous. Telegraph Melts, the title track, was another song he would rework for You Walk Alone, and while that version obviously draws more attention, both serve their albums well. This one has lead harmonica to accent Nancy's singing, while the guitar is played in the rhythmic style typical of this era. Lyrically, this song makes a lot of sense, but the title stands out among the other lyrics. Hearing about a random object in a Jandek song is not surprising, but the jury is out on why the telegraph has to be melting. Perhaps this takes place during a nuclear war? Anyway, it seems like another breakup song. The narrator left her man because she had to go somewhere. She allowed him to join her, but he refused and didn't take the situation seriously. What's cool is that Jandek takes the mic later in the song, assuming the role of the man. His response is that she didn't make her plans very clear. Nancy sings the last few lines, ultimately accepting how she's treated. It may not be saying much, but I would call this the most conventional track of the album. There's a definite story, and the lead harmonica sounds like something Howlin' Wolf would play. This may not be the first version you hear, but at least it does its job in half the time. From here on out, every track features the aforementioned mystery male singer, who adds a certain amount of chaos to the project. First, there's the duet Governor Rhodes, which is another baffling title. As Seth Tissue points out, it probably refers to Ohio Governor James Rhodes, who sent the National Guard to the Kent State protests. None of the lyrics relate to those things, but since Nancy was from Ohio, we'll just say she was behind the title. I don't want to give too much away, but this track is mostly about love, magic, and celebration. Also, it's pretty liberal with the Tom Toms. Now, it's time for the star of this freaky show. Easily one of the top 10 most famous Jandek songs, You Painted Your Teeth, may also be a sort of meme in the fandom, due to the singer's sheer passion about the subject matter. Yeah, until I heard this, I didn't even know people painted their teeth probably because it's a disappearing Asian custom. You never know. If Jandek gets more famous, it might come into fashion again. As for the song, it's fast and furious, the strings are often muted, and the mystery man yells more than he sings. He starts out by threatening a guy with a knife and a gun, lest he paint his teeth, and he gives the warning eight times. Don't paint your teeth! Don't paint your teeth! Unfortunately, the guy does go through with it, and the narrator treats it as a matter of life and death. Not only is the teeth painting fatal, but when the guy gets to heaven, his mouth will stick out among his white surroundings. Overall, there are many descriptions for this track, but I prefer to call it an utterly LSD or PCP damaged horror movie nightmare, as Aaron Goldberg put it. As the most famous disturbing Jandek song, I'm sure it drove away several potential fans, but for the experienced fans, it makes the entire album worthwhile. Following that hot mess is Mother's Day Card, an awkward little track with two vocal parts. It's a little hard to tell, but I'm guessing the voice of the mystery man was double tracked. Whatever the case, it's pretty funny hearing the parts go out of sync. The lyrics are exactly what you'd expect and they take the form of a repeated quatrain. The only instruments are drums and harmonica, but they're mostly in the background. 
I like to imagine this song as two little kids trying to perform for their mother, who appreciates the effort more than the result. It doesn't stand on its own, but it's good for a laugh. Finally, we have one of the most raucous things ever released by Corwood Industries. It's called The Fly, and interestingly enough, both this and the sci-fi remake of the same name were released in 1986. This time, I'm pretty sure both male singers share the spotlight, but the lyrics only come from Jandek, as he sings about a sketchy friend of his whom he likens to bugs. Once again, the narrative is hard to follow, but if somebody is digging up bodies at the graveyard and keeping a cabinet full of cash, there's definitely some mischief afoot. What makes the song raucous is the mystery man, who spends most of the song droning, yelling, and laughing. At first it makes sense because he almost sounds like a buzzing horsefly, but when he starts raising his voice, it sounds like he's deliberately being a nuisance. He even shouts at the top of his lungs a few times. In most of the time I've known this song, I've avoided it, but if it was supposed to be the musical equivalent of an actual fly, it has my respect. In the end, I find it tricky to rank this album. On one hand, the two best songs are not even unique to the album, but on the other, this was the album that introduced them. In fact, it was the first to have two tracks return on later albums, so it's yet another hint about what Jandek thinks of his work. That makes Telegraph Melts a pretty important record, but what about the more unique songs? If treated as a medley, the first three are a plus, although Interstellar Discussion did that better. Ace of Diamonds follows up in an aggressive way, while No Slow Ones is a nice contrast to that. If you're here for the weirdness, try the other tracks I mentioned. Because of all the surprises it has to offer, I would rate it above Foreign Keys and maybe even The Rocks Crumble. It certainly isn't the best starter album in the Jandek library, but once you're ready for it, you feel you've earned it in a bizarre way.